May God bless his holy word to our hearts. Good morning. I am part of this Easter story, even though I am not a believer. I am a Roman guard. I am there at the tomb, at the command of Pilate. I am there because of the rumors about this Jesus, this supposed miracle worker. I did hear he did miracles. I did hear that he made the blind to see and the lame to walk. But who, who in my Roman world can claim to be king? We have one king, and that is Caesar. But I was there at the tomb I was there, and Mary Magdalene and Mary came to the tomb, and and suddenly, unlike the report that everyone had fallen asleep or that we had run away in fear, the earthquake shook the ground, the, the ground opened and split. Two angels came out and proclaimed, He is not here, He has risen. We saw the whole thing. Now my friend, the centurion guard that was set at the cross also saw an earthquake and the sun darkened and people come out of tombs. I heard about all these things and I heard about how he declared in fear and awe, truly this is the Son of God. And we in fear and awe ran for our lives and went to tell the high priest what we had seen. And like good Roman guards that had been bribed many times before, we took the money and circulated the rumor that the disciples had come while we were asleep and stole Jesus' body away. But I want you to know fear and awe and the glory and power of God is what I saw even though I didn't believe. Happens all the time. It happened to this Jesus. People that he healed that suddenly didn't believe and cried out, crucify him because he claimed to be the son of God. He made himself equal with God. The scriptures tell you that that week of passion, that they heard the words of Jesus but did not listen to what he had to say They heard, but they did not listen. They heard, but didn't make him Lord. I'm in eternity now. I never made him Lord. But your words, the scriptures tell you that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I have to admit, even before I died, I knew he had to be one of the sons of God, like the at the cross who saw these wonders and in fear cried out, truly, this man was the Son of God. In your day, likewise, there's unbelievers who see the fear and the glory and the power of God. And they cry out, he is God. They don't do the words he says. They don't surrender their lives to him. And even in this scripture, it speaks to you of of those on the Mount of Olives that went and worshipped him and, and knew that he was the Lord, but in all the fear and awe as a believer of all the things that took place, the scripture tells you here in Matthew 28 at the end, some who believed in him doubted, even though they had seen all these things. Sometimes I bet you doubt in spite of the fact that your life has seen the fear and the glory and the power of God. This week, your own pastor and the treasurer have been afraid, but when they were young, one day praying in the office, somehow $3,600 and rolled $100 bills got in the offering box after we had prayed 
and counted the money, a meager offering of 400 bucks. To this day, that pastor and treasurer don't know how that money got there, except that it had to have been the angel of God. See, we believe as believers, but we don't believe. And as unbelievers, we see the power of God and the glory of God and the majesty of God, but we never give our heart over. And sometimes you as believers, you're, you're fragile in your faith. You go through hard times, difficult relationships, financial woes, physical illness, and you wonder where this living God who heals the sick and provides and blesses and gives you victory, where is he today in my need? And like those on the Mount of Olives, you worship this Jesus, but you doubt. In spite of the fear and the glory and the power of God in your life, you doubt. Because you're frail. Well, for us unbelievers, we don't want to yield our life. The Bible calls it the stubbornness of unbelief. We see and know, and yet we can't bend our knee because we want our own way. The Bible says all we like sheep have gone astray. Everyone has turned to his own way. But God the Father laid on this Jesus the iniquity of us all. My iniquity was there too, but I, as a Roman soldier, never put my faith or trust in it. You know, I lived for the moment. I took the bribe. I'm in the anguish of hell. I saw the glory of the Lord, but I never yielded my heart to that Lord. And so many people through history do the same thing. So many people, I understand, that even have passed through the very halls of this church have seen the glory of the Lord, answered prayer, the power of God, and treated it with the jade of defiance, the yawn, the jaded yawn of defiance, and shrugged their shoulders and say, coincidence. Or God does that for some people, but never for me. Where is he for me? What has he done for me lately, man? And even among the faithful, we worship him. But even like on the Mount of Olives and all the glory of a risen Savior, some doubt. Hey, your faith is nothing. I know even as a Roman soldier know that. Your faith is nothing without this resurrection. Why give to keep open a struggling church if it's just for this life? Your lives are short. Tomorrow you're going to die. Use all your money for yourself, man, if Jesus isn't raised from the dead. If you aren't living for an incorruptible crown, if there isn't a God that rewards the righteous for their faithfulness to his name, go for all the gusto you can, man. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you die. Unless, of course, you really believe he's raised from the dead. Then I guess your life has purpose. Everything has purpose if there's resurrection. Forgiving those who have offended and wronged you make every sense if there's a just God keeping the score. If there's a just God that also made a way of mercy... And he rewards those who are merciful and forgiving. Hey, makes every sense if you're living for another life where there's glory, where there's no more suffering, no more tears, no more pain. But if this is all there is, suffering and pain and heartache and broken relationships, get what you can now. Because tomorrow you die. But I think, unlike me, in my life, you believe in an incorruptible crown. You believe in a blessing.
blessed hope. You believe in things to come. And I think then that that changes how you use your time. That changes how you use your money. That changes the words that come out of your mouth. It even matters how you gossip or if you gossip. If you have a king of kings and lord of lords to, to one day acknowledge and to stand before his throne, I understand the, the words of your book say every word of your tongue, everything you say will be brought before the throne. If that's so, if this resurrection is so, even the words you say each day have huge significance if you live for a life to come. Hey, I didn't. I lived for the now. I took the bribe. I lived in fear. I saw the power of God and walked away from it. Like most Roman soldiers, I spent my free time getting drunk and living immoral and then went off to war because to me, life was very short. You see, I never knew at the end of a spear when I would die. I had no knowledge of God. And the hardship of life made me hard to any sense of mercy. Hey, as I lived, I even watched these Christians die for their faith, and I thought, what fools. But now in eternity, I am the fool. Because as your book says, only a fool says in his heart, there is no God. I think it could safely be said then, only a fool would say in his heart, there's no resurrection. All you have is now. Hey, this Jesus is pretty special. As I look from eternity, lots of world religions have good words to say about living. But only your Jesus had a way of forgiveness, the way of eternal life. Hey, no skin off my nose, I did. But what you decide to do makes a difference for all eternity. I hope this week, no better than that this day, because that's all you've got, you'll live like Jesus is alive. That everything you say and do is towards an incorruptible crown. As the words of your great apostle Paul said, there is nothing done in vain since Jesus is raised from the dead. Hey, I can't say hallelujah. I didn't believe in him. But your heart ought to. And my suggestion is, that since you believe in him and know that he's true, that you worship him with great joy today. And whatever your problems, you don't doubt. And now back to the pastor, because as a Roman centurion, I can't say it, but all of God's people said, amen. He is risen. Let's stand together and sing, Josh, one last time together. Hallelujah.